this is DJ Ocean Spray, and you're listening to WKNC 88.1 HD1 Raleigh, and this is an episode of The Strip Down. This week's episode is going to work a little bit differently than the usual format. I had the pleasure of interviewing Katie Davidson of Dear Nora right before their show at Neptune's Parlor a few weeks ago, and so I have a quick little chat with Katie, and I also have a live recording of their performance of White Fur. So before I get into my chat with Katie, I wanted to give a little bit of background on the band Dear Nora, since I didn't have as much time to really chat with them as I usually do. And so Dear Nora was formed in the late 90s. It was formed in Portland, and it's it's mostly Katie's project. Um, This tour that they uh, just did was a solo tour. It's like an indie folk band, um, very melodic songs that, I mean, to me, really resemble like a lullaby. Um, and they almost every single song they have like has an allusion to the mountains. So it's a reoccurring theme in their music, which I really love. It's just it's just very beautiful music. Um, and they're still making music today. Their most recent album. Human Features came out in 2022. It's just, I don't know, I think it's really amazing that they've been making music since, you know, for quite a while now, and they're still coming out with bangers. Um, so yeah, I was really excited to speak to Katie, um, and it was a very nice little conversation. So with that, here is my chat with Katie. Okay. Um, I am here with Katie Davidson of the band Dear Nora before their show at Neptune's Parlor, and I'm going to ask them um, a few questions. So to start out with, um, where do you generally like get your um, musical inspiration from? My musical inspiration, good question. Um, gosh, honestly, the biggest place would just be from living life, which might sound like a cop-out, but it's just absolutely true. Yeah. I just try to be uh, aware and present in my life, and that's when I feel like I notice things that seem interesting to me, and then those things that seem interesting to me end up in my lyrics. But I also do read, like I stay up on culture mm-hmm. quite a bit, and I read a lot of, I read like sub stacks and some news, and just like try to do deep dives on culture and that just keeps me like really stimulated I, I just, yeah yeah I just feel like I, I love knowing what's going on is there like a particular like person sub stacks that you like to read or is it just kind of like general there's two well, I don't know um I haven't had to say these before but I the one I like the absolute most is this one called the trend report mm-hmm um, I'm blanking on the guy's name, Kyle Raymond Fitzpatrick, I think. He lives, he's an expat and he lives in Europe, but I think he's a young queer guy. He's just really smart. Yeah. Have you heard of it? Um, I think I have. Yeah. I've been trying to, like, kind of get into Substack mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just, I just like that one. He's, he's tapped, he's tapped in. I hope I'm using the right pronouns, I'm not sure, but I think he goes by he. But, um, yeah, he's just tapped in and funny and smart and... I don't know, I just get a lot of inspiring information from that one. Um, and so what is your like general songwriting process like? Like do you find that like the instrumental parts come first or the lyrics? It used it's changed. Um back when I first started started writing songs, um the lyrics would always come at the exact same time as the melody and the chords. It was mm-hmm. all just one package, but I feel like that's kind of why a lot of my early lyrics are they're, they are thematic, but they are a little more nonsensical. Like, it's not easy to follow a total linear path on those. Um, and then I just started caring a lot more about lyrics as I started getting older. At this point, I, I may, maybe kind of write all of it at the same time, but what the, what's different is even if I get a basic idea down, I won't just go with the first lyrics that pop in my head and just, <laughs> I'll like work on them a lot more yeah. and 
I might have some rough lyrics, but I spend a lot longer refining them. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I generally like to ask um, artists a little bit about the album art they choose. Um, so I wanted to ask you about the art for um, Mountain Rock. Uh -huh. um, I've always kind of like wondered about it. Like, is it a specific mountain? Does it hold any like specific significance? Or like, why were you drawn to use that as the art? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually the person who took the photo that where the significance lies. I mean, I love the photo anyway. Um, but it's it's one one of my best friends, um, Jake Longstreth, who I went to college with, and he's he was one of the early members of Dear Nora. Um, he's a visual artist. That's mm -hmm. the main thing. He's a painter, and he does take photographs too. And that's just a early photo he took of um, the Grand Tetons. Um, in Wy like it's on the Wyoming Idaho border. Mm -hmm. like that and um, those are the mountains right behind Jenny Lake. And uh, I don't know, it just he took it right around this time I finished Mountain Rock, and it just seemed perfect. And he had done the covers for other albums anyway. He did the painting that's on We'll Have a Time. He took the photo that's on There Is No Home. Um, and he, yeah, he's been involved on some of the other artwork projects on all the ar other albums too, like it, like insert artwork or something like that, back artwork. Mm -hmm. So it's like really the person that was yeah. the most important thing, but obviously I love the image. That's awesome. Um, and so who would you say your like favorite or most influential like musical artist is? Of any time? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, I'll, I can't just name one. Yeah, like, that's okay. <laughs> um, I mean, if you want to do some deep dive stuff, definitely would dig into, like, Joni Mitchell, The Roaches, Bob Dylan, um, that kind of stuff. And then, um, I love Kate and Anna McGarrigal. It's a duo from Canada, um, sisters. And, but if you want to get more contemporary... I absolutely love Rosalia. Um, I love the SZA albums. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, I'll think of more, but those are def. Oh, I love James Blake. Like, I like, I like them a lot. Like, just like contemporary artists doing really cool things with melody. Yeah. And also, just their aesthetics are so interesting. I just find it. I love their chord changes, and I love how they all sing. So, yeah. Um, and then finally, um, how would you describe the music that you create in just three words? Oh, amazing. <laughs> um, that's a good challenge. Um, okay, I, I probably shouldn't say this word first, because I don't think it necessarily comes first, but it's the first one that popped into mind, which is like, humorous. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not like silly or downright funny, but I definitely like to play around with humor in the lyrics and the, and the songwriting. So humorous and, um, maybe like some version, I'm going to use multiple words meaning the same, almost the same thing, but like reflective or nostalgic, mm -hmm. another one. And then, um... The last one would probably be something along the lines of like, mm, I don't know, I'm gonna cheat. Like, either poetic or novelistic or something having to do with the lyrics, something like that. Up next, I have the live recording I took of their performance of White Fur when they played at Neptune's Parlor.
That's all for this episode of The Strip Down. Shout out again to Katie for letting me speak to you for a few minutes on your very busy day of tour. Um, if you enjoyed their music, um, you can find them on Instagram. It's at Dear Nora Realty. Um, Bandcamp, Spotify, YouTube is all just Dear Nora. Um, and thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Strip Down. Um, once again, this is DJ Ocean Spray, and you're listening to WKNC 88.1 HD1 Raleigh. Thank you.